So welcome everyone uh, to our first monthly um, jazz photography conversation. Um, uh, the, uh, the list of upcoming few sessions is available on JJ News. Um, and they will take place at this time, which is uh, a noon a Central uh, US Central Time. And they're usually on Saturdays, either the third, the second, third, or the fourth Saturday, depending on the, on the month. Um, so today, um, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Adriana Matteo, who is a uh, um, uh, music photographer, uh, award-winning music photographer, and uh, she um, has been active mostly in New York City, but she's based uh, currently in Buenos Aires, which is her native city. Um, uh, Adriana, you're also a, a teacher. Uh, I, I've taken lessons from you, photography lessons. How did you get into photography? Um, hello, everyone. I, I am a second generation of uh, cinematographers in the family. My father was a uh, film director and a director of photography. So I started at a very early age in photography and later on into cinematography and lighting. Uh, and I did later on a master degree in film and directing as well and cinematography with uh, Laszlo and Laszlo and Robert Draper, besides my father in the, in the state. And I graduated in my master in, in film in New York University in New York. And I have to correct that I um, <clears throat> I do reside now back and forth, yes, <laughs> but not based. I'm not based in Buenos Aires, but I am expanding three, four months and back and forth, oh, and also in Italy. Um, and uh, what uh, led, uh, made you take up jazz uh, photography specifically? I think I chose uh, music early on, uh, and it was uh, during a show that my father was, um, the director of photography at the theater with Bossa Nova, Elise Regina, the singer. And at that time, I was my first time, I think I was around 12 um, or less. And, and I was uh, at, at that time backstage. And when I saw that from backstage, I, I, I said to my dad, that's what I'm gonna do. I think he thought singing, thanks God it wasn't. Uh, so I, <laughs> Um, that's, I think it's when, when I, I saw that inspiration and I went on that direction, um, subconsciously, even though I was photographing anything I could as a child. Now, jazz camps afterwards, I think it's a, it's a question in two parts, um, jazz camps, because I was, um, uh, doing my master degree in NYU. And at the time, when I finished my classes, I, I, I had to present also a thesis, as we all know, and a short. And I wanted to be a documentary. And I also wanted to do a documentary. At the time, I was really into film. I thought it was going to be film. And I started hanging out after school in NYU in, down the, in the village. Uh, Washington Square, I started going to Bradley's and all these these um, places that we were so lucky to all meet in the 90s, where Roy Hargrove, Antonio Hart, um, uh, Christian McBride, Jeff Tain, we were all, mm -hmm. Willie Jones III, it was Benny Green, we were all at that time in New York, we had all moved in. And I think I was the only one 
I, I was the only one in, in art in, that was not in music. So I got, I started to go, 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 and I fell in love. I, I really fell in love. That was the theme I wanted to, to pursue. And I started taking photographs. Um, so to, to create my documentary, it was going to be a film and it ended up being a, a film of photographs. So, um, and, and in there, I was giving away my photography to anyone I meet to see what they think, you know, to connect with people. And um, in there, I also got afterwards to meet great mentors like Frank West, Jimmy Heath, Peter Walton, Dave Rubin. I mean, I just got to meet a lot, a lot of other people later on through these young lions. Um, and that was the period and how it started. Um. Other than your dad, who else has influenced your photography? Um, I believe it was by seeing the albums at home that my dad had of jazz. My father liked jazz very much as well as tango and bossa nova. So there were a lot of albums of that time at my home and a lot of artists coming in and writers at the house because my father was an artist. So there were many, many, I have to say, albums from photos of William Claxton. And I was starting because of my age, of course, being very influenced by Herman Leonard. Um, so, but the, the but I was taught into the Hans Ansel Adams te technology. So so the, the the lighting and the technique I use is Ansel Adams, and it was taught to me by my father. So so what I teach and what I learn is through the Ansel Adams technique, uh, and and it's in, um, which comes from film. I started in film, of course, and I did a transition into digital, but I come from film. So the technique is the technique used, taught by my father, by Ansel Adams. And then I, I think that I, I adapt that technique influenced by all these covers of William Claxton and um, Sherman Leonard, whom I had the honor to meet in person in New Orleans before he passed. Okay. Um, so based on that technique, what type of cameras or equipment do you use currently? Um, currently I'm using in digital, um, I'm using digital currently mostly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I use, I, I, use uh, um, I use film, but I'm mostly using uh, for the high, high, high end uh, resolution, I'm using Hasselblad. And, and this is a, a Hasselblad um, camera, which is medium format. That's why the photos are so large that they can be, they have so much detail. And um, then I am using a Canon camera, um, which I love, it's a Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is a very good camera to use at night. Mm -hmm. And also, you you know, there are moments that you can't be using this because this is extremely it has to be extremely steady and firm. And this is more. So these are right now. I'm using these two. I don't carry anything else. I don't carry thousand lenses, and I don't carry any more than this. Okay. This, so this no uh, no type of stability like a. No, I don't use it. No, if it is a studio photo shoot, of course, I would use a tripod. But no, no, not on live, and not on festivals or any any situation. A studio, you can use a tripod certainly. Okay. But I think and I'm the, more. Uh, the studios are mostly records. Uh huh. Which I, I've done. See the walls, most many. We all know mm -hmm. the many records, uh, covers. And mm -hmm. most of your lives, 
structure. You have to be very steady because you can't have a tripod. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you you use those two lenses. Uh, right now, I am using um, uh, thirty-five to ninety in medium format, mm -hmm. and I am using a twenty-four to three hundred right now on my Canon. I have switched from my, as any artist, I, I have went through periods of different lenses. Mm -hmm. um, when I was doing the Hot House magazine, uh, there was a need to use another lens because the subject would be sitting in front of me. But uh, lately I've been using this lens. It may change if I change, if things change, you know, that's, the lens is it is a very important question because I think that the personality of the photographer is defined through the choice of his lens. Because the choice of his lens it really defines his identity. So it really it's not a a lens that may be good for him or her or them. Every photographer has its own identity and personality and it is um, something to discover for him or her, or by the mentor or by the teacher, uh, because everybody has a different way to see things through his lens. Uh, we can be all on a pit, we're a hundred, and we will all take all, some of them the same photo, some of them all different. Okay. I think it is uh, quite important that framing and lenses defines it almost more than the camera. I mean, you can use an icon, you can use any camera, any brand. I don't, I don't, I don't mean here, I don't know if I should say names, I apologize, uh, but um, I, think, I think you can use, it doesn't have to be the latest camera. For me, yeah. sometimes it's just much more important that you use a good lens, that you frame well, and that you use within that camera that is not the most expensive, that is not the best, that you use the right technique that you know your camera, like if you know your base or you know your drum, know your camera, know your lens. I, I don't care how expensive, how it is in, in that sense, no? It is, it is my mind. My... Uh, uh, what about any flash or fill-in light or anything like that, or you just use that for the light? I don't, I don't use any, any flash because at the time that I started photographing, it was at night only at night. I could only photograph at night in the club. And it had been a gap of, of silence in photography because Herman Leonard had died. And then there were some photographers around, but not, not consistently every night in every club. There would be a certain club because they worked there, or, but I was going to every club. So there was no way I could use the flash. So I found that my camera and the lens, and the speed of my lens and the technique to get the light hit faster, mm -hmm. <laughs> the mirror, so I can get that picture. Um, so I became very, well, I, I am more known for my also night photography, which is so bright, but it really is no flash being used. Okay. Um, for those of you who, who joined us a little late, um, I'm Harai Retarian. I'm a JJA uh, member uh, and I'm an amateur photographer. Uh, and this is the first uh, uh, of monthly series of conversations with jazz photographers we're having. And today we're featuring the work of Adriana Mateo. Um, Tell us some of the highlights of your career as a photographer. <laughs> I, I think I was just very blessed of the timing in life. It's not something that I could have planned or, or that could happen again. I, I was just there at the right time and at the right place. It was three generations all together. We were all together in New York. Uh, and it was just like, you wanted to be there every night, every night and in every session, every time. And, um, and luckily everyone that I got to meet that mentored me or 
gave me the opportunity or chose me to, to portray them are, 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 have passed. And we, we still have the new generation and the generation of my age, like I said, Benny Green, um, Christian McBride, Jeff Tain, Antonio Hart, and what, Rob Hargrove, who just passed recently. But I, I you know, I had been blessed with Dave Brubeck, with Jimmy Heath, with Frank West, um, Mr. Weston, um, the Connets, um, and with each one of them, and there is a story behind because they were really mentoring me. They were asking me to do their birthday or Ron Carter, you Ron Carter, Tony Rawlings, my God. Um, so <laughs> um, I, 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 I was just blessed. I, there was nothing else I could do than do it. <laughs> my heart couldn't do anything else than, than be with them. I mean, and, and each photo has a story, each one of them. I could be here doing <laughs> one session about one story about each photo that would take hours because they, they would, we would see it, we would confide, we would hear stories and, and, and you know, it's just how it happened. That's how it happened from the nineties. You, uh, yeah. you have connections also in uh, Italy, Padua and Genoa. No, no, no. I don't have any connections anywhere. I didn't have any connections in New York either. I I meet everyone in a bar at Bradley. Mm -hmm. One of being one of them. Then Sweet Basil, well, Sweet Basil with many others. But. Um, no, uh, I was discovered at Newport Jazz Festival by uh, Carlo Pagnotta and Enzo Capua and by Gabriela Ticolo. And these are, these are festival uh, creators in Europe, one in Padova, the other one in Umbria. And it, they, they saw my work and they published my work in Europe, also in Germany. I was discovered in New York by a German producer who put my work uh, before the pandemic in, in Germany. Um, so every, all my work came from, from working in festivals and clubs in New York or albums, of course, records, uh, photography websites or portfolios of musicians. So I do not know. I met them, all of them in the US and that's when I started traveling around the world, France, Italy, um Germany um that's that's basically okay um so I'm uh we have one question uh from the audience before I pull up your photos and to discuss them um how do you deal with the poor lighting in nightclub <laughs> it's an excellent question <laughs> become friends with the bar owner <laughs> That's the best advice. <laughs> I mean, yes, it is. I mean, uh, I at the beginning it was really, really a lot of patience and a lot of knowing which moment to photograph. And then I recommend really, really getting in touch to whom and where you're going to photograph. Herman Leonard did it, and he told me. And I was shy, but I started doing it. So I went to the Blue Note. As Herman Leonard told me because Herman Leonard will put his light. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, after meeting him, I, 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 I was taking photos at the Blue Note and at the Zinc and, and, and I will ask permission to speak with the lighting person and mm -hmm. see if he could help me a bit that night or during a certain moment in the set to just sometimes use just one color, maybe white, or maybe just blue instead of being blank, blank, all these colorful. But um, in total honesty, your camera and your technique shall be able to break that down. And you should be able to photograph by controlling your color temperature and, and the white balance in your camera. And that is basically what I am teaching right now because you, you can't, you can't handle that. You can't interrupt a person in lighting, you can't get in everybody's ass. 
-hmm. So, so the importance is that you know your camera and that you owe a camera that you know you can control the color temperature and that you know you can control the white balance. Um, it's important to have a fast lens. So if you learn how to control those factors within your camera, you will be able to do in post editing few corrections, few aberrations of color correction. Mm -hmm. But most of your, your, your photo could be used in color. Sometimes it's necessary to transfer to black and white because the, the aberration of colors are not being able to, to be, be done. But uh, you should be able to do, because I do a lot of black and white, so people say, oh, can I use my color? Yes, you can. You should, uh, I apologize. You should be using um, your, your color temperature and white balance before you get to your show, whether it's at daytime or nighttime. Very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Extremely important in digital. Um, so let's, uh, that's a good segue. Let, let's talk about some of your photos. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the photo that won a photo of the year, uh, Jazz Journalist Association Award in 2019, correct? And correct. this must be a very bittersweet photo because it's, one of the last taken of Roy Hargrove. Yes, it was. It was my last photo. I, well, I did take some photos of him at Smoke after this, but this was the last public, really public important theater photo taken of him. After this, he did not, he did go to Paris. Uh, I don't know if there are some photos of that for his birthday and he passed. Uh, so it was a very, very, at the moment, it was either at, at looking at it today, it's, 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 it makes me so happy that the Just General Association has preserved this photo. It's so important, the preservation of jazz photography. It is so important. And, and, and I encourage everyone to join the the association because it will only inspire other people to photograph. Um, we can mentor, uh, we can preserve through it. Um, and when you mentor someone, it's not the same as teaching. When you mentor, you are taking your, that person you're, you're viewing all the possibilities that that person has. You're not teaching him. You're letting him know or her what are his or her talents. You're helping him or her in that. That's the mentorship. Then you can teach them. You can teach them technique, but you should never correct. You should help them discover their identity. In the same way that when you photograph a musician or someone or anyone that you photograph, you should discover, you should be able to grasp, take that out, that, that, that he or, or she has. That, that's when a photo has emotion. That's when a photo has identity. And I think that moment was very special that day with Roy. Um, he was already a, a bit fragile and he sat at the piano and I just felt that that's how was his home. His the piano is was surrounding him in in, and that's how he was going to live and die. He lived and died his, his life in music, and it, the piano contains all that inside. I think it's like a magic moment. Uh, I was I was gifted to have. Um, so this next one is one of my favorites of yours. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> this was very funny because I, I remember this one. I had to tell this little story. I, I don't think I will get to the rest yeah. of them, but I, I had to do this one because this was, uh, so I am at Umbria Jazz and I, of course, I'm, I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous because it's Sonia Rollins. I mean, I wasn't nervous about the photo. I was just, just I just wanted Sonny Rollins, my goodness. And uh, so I get to be backstage. I get to speak with him. I get introduced by the festival founders and promoters. And it was a lot of responsibility. So I, I like to talk to the permission and said, I mean, the old fashioned stuff that we do. And so I just go to Mr. Rollins backstage and say, sir, I'm going to be one of the many that are going to be in the pit taking your portrait, but this is for Umbria and I don't know what I say. I said, well, if you're able to take the photo when I look at your lens right straight on, then you're good. <laughs> so I remember that I was on the pit with hundreds of, of, of colleagues that are lovely because we're all friends and many good friends in there. I was just did he really say he's going to look at my lens and I have to wait? Or he was joking. And he really did. So I, had, I, I can't believe that he could look at me because we were, we were so many on that pit. It's a huge stage. So I click and, and I think I was sweating and sweating and sweating and I couldn't until I get to my room and download and see, oh, I got it. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> so he, this was his last performance. So I think he was, um, this is his last public performance photo. He never performed after this photo. So it is, it is for me, this, this two in the order you put them, I don't know, but I didn't know, but there's a third one, but this was very meaningful to me. Because it's, he, he's a very good friend of the latest Jimmy Heath, who mentored me and wrote my the foreword of my book. So um, I'll pull up next Jimmy Heath's photo <laughs> to share. <laughs> well, you're just looking at him. You just get get to to. to being total bliss and happiness because being around him was dancing and we were so many with a big band and his old friends and it's, and it's the best time of my life. Best, best years of my life with the all stars Easy Lesbie big band with the Jimmy Heath big band and um, Little Bird was all the stories backstage and and and, and it's, it's it's more about my, more than my photos you just already inspire when you were going to photograph him because you he wouldn't stop talking and telling stories from so long ago i mean that you know he, he just we would speak even when i had to travel weekly he would speak weekly with each one of us he would stay very very close with all of us and he would call you when there were photos and shows and everything like if even if necessary twice a week and let you know so you will go and i will go for sure i, I probably have more photos of jimmy Heath and, and roy hargrove than any 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 other musician i love that you can actually read the notes even though the paper is so white you can clearly read the notes and i like the little touch of the box of reads next to him yeah that is a very good observation because one of the tendencies when we are photographing is to blow the white it's very difficult to photograph in black and white because the white have to musical notes written on them and if you can't read the notes it's just a white patch and it's very bothersome so so it's very important why when photographing in black and white that you acknowledge your white balance before and in every room that you enter you have to work quick check on that and make sure that that is in order 
um, and this photo is it, it's just a beautiful moment because that's the backstage of the Blue Note, and that was his birthday celebration. So he was telling stories, and, and that's a very typical phase of him talking. His hat, his famous that he always wore that coat, always wore that coat, and that hat. Very, very and beautiful uh, memory. Another uh, uh, really beautiful portrait is this one. Um, well, with Cedar, I, I have I had the honor to work the last 10, 10 years of his life, not previous to that. And I was able to do his Late his last album, The Bouncer, with high notes. And this is a photo that he had asked me to do. I was his personal photographer for those years. I would follow around. And this photo was absolutely uh, selected by him to be taken, perhaps not the lighting, perhaps not the mood, but yes, the posture but he was wearing any, everything he wanted a, something very very simple he's not wearing a suit uh, which he always did <clears throat> he's wearing just something simple and dark and we talk about some Rembrandt lighting before meaning uh, like in paintings darkness and light I think he was trying to show that harmony and light and darkness. And, and I think that that was what we were looking after in this photo both. So it, it became a very special photo for all of us and for him and I, and this was the photo that Martha, his wife who's a very, very dear friend chose for his ceremony and his uh, mass at St. Peter's Church. So it's a mass card as well. And it's also part of, it's also on his last uh, album. But I do have many, many photos of him, of course. He was an incredible mentor along with Jimmy Heath. Both of them influenced this a lot my career. Another really dynamic photo you've mm -hmm. taken. Yeah, this is on during his birthday. I was at Newport Jazz Festival and um, uh, Mr. Brobeck asked me to um, take his, a portrait of his uh, birthday. And I, um, it was so different. Um, from the backstage to the stage, because he's very, very quiet. He was very quiet. And uh, uh, he, he on the stage, oh my God, it's like an army. <laughs> mm -hmm. All his energy is like a whole army. So it's like, wow, it just breaks through your camera. It just goes through your lens. He just walks inside your camera with that big energy, sound and smile. Um, uh, at least that's how I I I, I felt uh, Dave Brubeck, you know, like as a Sonny, like a person that would look at you and check you out, or Jimmy, you know, make you so happy that you are really happy to go take the photo. So everyone gives a, a different energy for you to be inspired before you go out there mm -hmm. and, and do your your own art, your own interpretation of their energy, because it is only my interpretation of their energy, of course, different for any other photographer. Yeah. And uh, one of my all time favorite musicians. Ooh. Also oh tragically God. left us too soon. Well, we did, uh, we were together at Umbria Jazz. This is taken at the Teatro Morlaki. 
and it was a four a pianist. And it was amazing because there were four large pianos. Like if you look from above, it was like butterfly. And in there was Benny Green, um, uh, Kenny Barron, um, Eric Reed, and and of course uh, him. And and I think that. Besides doing the show, we had prepared these photos because he was thinking on a on a Mulgrew was thinking on an album on a new recording. So because I was there, we were talking, and he says, "Well, why don't?" Of course, I did the photos for Umbria, and then this is why we should do some photos for my album, my next album. And uh, this is one of the photos for his album. I had worked with him with Roy Hargrove. I had done a recording that I have the photos that are archived uh, when they played together. But the, he wanted to do this album, so I, I, I did the photos. And this was in 2013. We flew back together to New York in the same plane. We talk about them, we look at them, we were on the on the plane. And it was it was fun and he he um I said, Well, I get in touch in New York, and then I was never able to get in touch with him because a few months later he passed. Mm. So um, very gentle, very kind, young. Um, it was a it was a shock. It was a big shock for all of us to lose Mugu. Here you also incorporated the audience in your photo. Well, this is, uh, when I incorporate the audience, it's because um, musicians, when they are playing, they have a language, they communicate between them. That, that's the beauty of a, of a photography when you have more than one musician, uh, is that they're talking to themselves, I mean, you know, they, they look at each other, they signal, they signal each other, they, it's a way of talking, sometimes it's like, or, or something else. But, but the public, when, when there's that kind of energy, evolving energy, the public gets very engaged. And it's like, it's like they are part of it. They, they become as, almost as musicians because they, they're so, so involved, it's so, the energy is just so beautiful. Uh, that it becomes all one, the lens, the camera, the musicians, the, the, the public, it's, it's, it's just the oneness. And it's so, it's so powerful when, that, when you see that through your lens. Um, you, 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 you can't keep to lower your camera and not include them. It's part of that energy. Mm -hmm. Because the musicians feel that, they're playing for them. So they are a part, the public is a part of it. And when they see the photo, they also should see themselves. The public also sees themselves how, it, the public shows how they felt about them playing. So, so it's a lot of information doing that. I, I, I like to do that a lot when I can. Right. Mm. Here's the great moment you've captured. Yes, I, I, this is at Newport Jazz Festival. I, I never had a really uh, as close relationship as I had with Cheater or with uh, Jimmy or Mulgu or Roy or, or any of the others, but, but very, very friendly, because very, very kind man. And I talk a lot with him, spoke many, many times with him, quiet, in many opportunities. Uh, and this time uh, I was just working at Newport and he asked me he, he, to, to please, uh, What's his birthday coming? Or and, and and he just asked me please to take a particular photo when he was listening to his band, like honoring his band. I mean, so I 
we we spoke about it. And I I should say it would be an honor. I mean, and I and I really did follow what he wanted me to photograph. Same as with Peter Walton in that photo. I I they kind of asked me what they wanted to be transmitting to in that photo. Uh, not that I necessarily would never know if I did it 100% because they are not here to ask them, but I, I, I tried. And that was a conversation I had with them previous to the portraits, what, what they were looking for, for me to capture. If there was anything in particular they wanted to, the audience or the posterity, the next generations to see. And they says, well, I want them a photo where not I am playing, where I could see how important it is for me, my band, to listen to my band. Yeah. And that is the story of that photo. And it was for me, yeah, an important moment. <laughs> that one too. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes, that one too. Actually, this photo also Frank, Mr. Mr. Frank West. Uh, uh, it was his birthday, and he said, mm -hmm. "I want a photo of my birthday on 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 the piano playing the sago." Says, "Okay, sorry." <laughs> and I, uh, he chose it. I mean, he, he said, but he didn't tell me when, so I had to be, of course. Of it's the morning that we were on stage and practicing and to the show. This did not happen in, at the show, as you can tell. So, but he, he took the time to say that he wanted a photo of the piano one day. So I had to be all day waiting until he sat on the piano, which he did, and um, take the photo. Um, one of the sweetest men I ever met. And there's an app, a photo I did not submit, but it was a photo of him with Jimmy playing together, which is one of my favorites. Yeah. I always like two musicians. Oh, Lee Connors. <laughs> very, very, uh, this is backstage at, uh, that, um, um, Charlie Parker Jazz Festival, uh, and um, <laughs> he was teasing me a little bit on this photo. Uh, I can see a little bit on his gesture on his face, <laughs> and um, I was trying to do a style of portraits, um, but they're not necessarily playing. He was reading the paper, uh, the shows. And um, and I, uh, you know, he asked me to take the photo. He basically posed himself, sat, and I took his portrait. This is Hasselblad. Mm. And I and, and I and I think it's in there where, of course, if you can afford to buy a great camera, you can do it. But for historical reasons or preservation, it's good. But um, that's why it has so much detail, his hands mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything, because he's a very, the floor is a very high definition camera. Before we um, go to, mm -hmm. to the last photo you uh, gave me, can you tell us a little bit about how you use the angle from which you're taking the photo? Um, I think that the, that once you know, you have a lens, uh, the moment that you know which lens you're using, you know that your lens has a range. Let's say I'm using this camera, I'm like just for easier purposes. So I know my lens has this range. So there aren't many many places I can go, but all these that this lens has, and they're marked mm -hmm. here or in between. So if the person 
is sitting like in the position, let's take the photograph of Lee Connett there. I know he's, he's right next to me. Uh, or, or I either go myself backwards or I go closer. So that you, it's important you know your lens. Mm -hmm. So it's not the angle, it's, it's the lens. Mm -hmm. You need to know geometry, lens, depth of field, it, it is the most important thing in, in, in photography. These are the technical parts that should be really, really taught. What, what is the depth of field in a, in, in, in a 300, in a, in a, in, in a 50? In what, how far are you? How, what is going to be seen? All the background blur and him in, in, in solid. I mean, if you do not know what is the depth of field of that lens, uh, it, it, you, it, it is adamant that you, you learn lenses, mm -hmm. then you choose what angle, because you already know what lens you're doing. So you already so used, you already know by eye, this is two meters, one meter. I want everything in focus. Let's say a William Claxton style, everything mm -hmm. in focus. So Herman Leonard would be a black, a black noir more style that I have. But let's, mm -hmm. let's say this one is more a William Claxton style, very, very much that photo. So that photo, I know that that lens, everything, I want everything in focus. I want uh, the background, I want the front, uh, I want everything in focus. So if I want- So very similar focus, to this photo. Sorry? Very similar to the Randy Weston Very photo. similar to this, yes. So on all these photos, it's just extremely important that when everyone that is starting to learn photography goes through asking their teacher what, what happens in that lens? What is the depth of field in that lens? Why, why would you use that lens? You have to teach them what, why? Because I am the boss. I have the camera. I'm going to tell the people what to look at. So mm -hmm. whatever I choose to frame is what people is going to look at. Mm -hmm. so, so, so it's not about an angle. It's about you knowing what do you want to show about your subject. Photographing a flower would be the same. What do you want to show? Do you want to know? Or do you want to tell a story of the public, the musician, the instrument, or do you just want him? So you mm -hmm. have to make very sure you understand what, what is the message that you are going to give. Choose the lens for that. Know the depth of field of that lens. And then you know, because you know the distance, and then you would choose an angle, up mm -hmm. or down. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I... Yeah, that's... Explained correctly. Yeah. And this is, this is the, uh, the last photo we, we have. Um, uh, is this backstage as well? Uh, yes, this is definitely in Detroit and it's mm -hmm. backstage. And this is his birthday. And this year was, I have a whole <laughs> entire hard drive of this because it's Jimmy Heath, whom I travel with, um, Mr. Western, Roy Hargrove, uh, uh, Ron Carter Nonet and Quartet. Uh, Freddie Cole, this was an, an amazing 2016 Charlie, uh, uh, Detroit Jazz Festival, and it was his birthday. So we were mm -hmm. celebrating his birthday, and this is his birthday photo. I mean, I don't know, uh, uh, I guess it's some people, Roy had a different style, but Roy would be with mm -hmm. his bow tie, and but th this is what he wanted. Mm -hmm. I did mostly, right. when, when I took the photographs of them, their last photo of their birthday, which just happened to be, they, they mostly chose to how, how to see it or where. Mm -hmm. I, I did not have much say in them to capture the gesture or whatever. He, he's very relaxed and very comfortable before, five minutes after he was on stage. For two hours. 
what uh, um, before we open up for questions, one final question from me, what advice do you give people who want to get into this field? Jazz or, or jazz photography? photography yeah. Jazz photography. Jazz photography um, is fascinating, number one, for me. So I think that the advice that I give is that they need to understand jazz music a little bit. It is important that the photographer, whichever theme he chooses to photograph, knows his theme. If you choose to photograph horses or flowers, I mean, you have to know about that. So I do recommend that the uh, people that start, that they learn music because it helps a lot when you photograph. If you're photographing a big band and they are playing um, any composition, any standard, and you know the standard, you know when it's going to be a bridge, you know which instrument is next, the sax, the bass, you know the music, you know the, you can read the music sheet. You don't have to be a musician, you don't have to be an but it would be helpful if you know a little bit about music because you move faster through, and you would be, you would be able to take better photographs because you won't miss, because you know that already if the sax is finishing up, it has three, four more notes and the bass is coming up. Mm -hmm. So so if you're on a stage where you have to go to the other side because you're on a pit on a festival, it's, it's, that is a big help. You're going to get photos that other photographers don't just because you know more about what is coming in the music. So the same in recording. If you're recording inside a studio and you are, you know, every musician is inside a box. And if you're allowed inside the studio with headphones and or making noise and all the things that rules that apply, you should know what they're playing. Because I, I, I can't be running from room to room. I have to be knowing who's coming next. So among my duties is to know the music, but I'm not necessarily saying that person has to go to music school to become a photographer. I'm just saying that it will help that the newcomer, the, the new young photographers understand a little bit of music or okay. the thing they're going to choose to photograph yeah nice okay um any questions for adriana you can either ask it directly or you can type it in the messages and i can read out Um, Sue is saying that uh, I took that? a master class with Annie Leibowitz on masterclass.com and she said many things, but it seemed to me the most important was when she said you have to learn how to see. What do you think? You, you have to learn how to? See. How to see. I don't know what how she what she tried to say. I, I mean, in 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 my view, there is no other way to take a photo that from, you have to look with the heart. The photograph doesn't come from your eye. The eye is already there. The camera is already there. You already learn your your technique. You already got the teacher. You already it has to come from the heart. It has to be a, a, a connection to absorb the moment and anything else, nothing else exists. So I, I don't know if that's what she meant or um, I'm not sure I never uh, took a class with her or know her. I mean, I wouldn't, but it's a contemporary, but uh, I, I say, uh, always say, and I, and I had a workshop called uh, Photographing from the Heart. And I think that's how we did Peter Walton's photo. And um, yes, all the technique, everything, I can teach you everything, but I cannot teach you that, that yeah. you feel the photo, that you feel the music, that you hear the music, that you feel the expression, or that you have a feeling at all, whichever it is for you, different from 
any other. Mm -hmm. I can't teach you that. I can mentor you and I can help you discover that on you. But um, yeah, it's a good question. I think that if, if that was Annie Levovitz was trying to say, I agree on that. Yeah, and Sue says, agree the relationship with the artist as well, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, in my case, I had always, all the, the jazz musicians that I photographed, I had, I had a relationship, even if it wasn't a friend, it was a colleague, at least, or I had worked many times with. Uh, for a certain period of time, it, the jazz scene is not that big as in other areas, but I, I still think that you, 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 you have to photograph from your heart. There's a moment that, that in order to apply, some people will call it art, okay, or, or, or your art, but, but there's a moment when you have learned, I, I, I can teach you everything I know. That is the easiest part. To teach you all I know, I have no problem. I do that a year, two years, whatever, I teach you all. But, but I have to teach you to discover who you are as an artist. How do you discover yourself? Because you, and then do you have that to see? Can, can, can you see the beauty on that? that? That is unique on each one of us. And it's different on each one of us. Right. Um, many new photographers struggle with sharing their work on social media and then being used, shared, and credited. My, many artists <laughs> post photos but do not credit the photographer. What would your advice be on promoting your work but getting the well-deserved credit? Well, Fiona, that that is a that that was that that's a very important question. It's a very good question. Um, I don't know why it happened. Uh, it should not happen because if you go to a show, and even if, at, at a small club, not a theater, and and someone is is, is playing a uh, standard, they will say standard by, and they will play it. Okay, they're making a mention who wrote the song and they were, oh, we were playing Jungle Train. And so I don't know, I think it's the, the photographer that has to impose and, and not be afraid of saying, uh, first of all, it is his right, it's his creation. Of course, if he has permission, of course, if he's allowed, which I assume it is, Photos has they have to be um, um, signed, you know, with the technique of digital. All your photos have to be signed, copyrighted. There's a lot of work, but I suggest that the best, at least what I do, is that I copyright all my work in the U.S. registry, copyright registry in Washington D.C. So I submit sometimes four or five, a thousand photos. I pay the fee, it's expensive, but the photos are not only uh, are copyrighted and registered. What about digital Now, why people don't give you a credit, Fiona? I don't know. But you know what? You should write under whoever used your photo. Not, uh, this is my photo. It, it's what hard, about watermarking? It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I was just going to say it's hard, isn't it? Because yeah, you know, with, with my kind of women in jazz media hat on, we get um, artists um, kind of uh, send us photos all the time um, because obviously we want to promote them and share their work. Uh, and I would say ninety percent of the time they will send all these incredible photographers and they will not mention the photographer. So we have to email back and say we, we, you know we can't use these photos without the credit. And they will then email and go, oh, it's this photographer, but it's not in their mindset. Like the as you say, you know, happy to share their music, but it's equally important who is it who took the photo. This is creation as well. So I think that there's a shift in mindset for artists as well to credit 
you know, everything involved in the process. Uh, and this, I find this loads that artists are very happy and love sharing these great phot uh, photos, but for some reason forget to credit the photographer. So I think sometimes the, the mindset of the artist needs to, you know, value, if you like, the photographer just as much as the, as the performer, if you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, Fiona, I, I agree. And, I, and, and that's why in your um, IG, you do, you do a great job because you, you are promoting that. Why it happens, I don't know. Because previous, it was a gap between Herman Leonard and my generation. And um, in that gap, it seems like they, they lost photography as, a, as an art. And, um, and I think it's extremely important what you're saying. I mean, they have to be, give credit because that person took the photo. That person wrote the song. That person played the bass. It doesn't yeah, absolutely. It's no different. Yeah. yeah. We, we will and, win the and battle. You demanded <laughs> and, uh, sorry, Fiona? We will win the battle, as I say, I think it's, uh, it, it's starting to change, but it's interesting what you said about that drop since kind of the olden days, if you like, you know, whereas photography was very highly esteemed and everybody knew the photographers. And there was a gap where suddenly, for whatever reason, um, photographers were not known, they weren't promoted, they weren't talked about so much. But I think now that is starting to, with, with people like yourself, it's starting to come back in the forefront. You know, photographers are kind of in people's minds a little bit more now, but there's still still a way to go, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think Fiona, that uh, what is it, it? I believe it has because of that gap it happened. But I think that uh, it is extremely important that the photographer defends that because he is helping the whole media, the whole musician, the whole. I mean, it's just a team. It's a one. And um, why it happened, that is the only explanation I have found so far. But when I teach, I say to all my students, sign your photo. <clears throat> um, I mean, I don't understand why they wouldn't. Why somebody wouldn't mention you. It's, it's, almost, it's just rude. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. I think it had to do with a lack of education in the process in between when Herman Leonard disappeared and all the new ones of my generation started taking over, which we aren't that young, mm -hmm. but for the youngest that are coming up, I, I want them to sign, I want them to register, organize the working folders, send them to the US register to, or in Britain, you have yours. There's a worldwide one. Um, you have to copyright the work. Maybe Thank you so much. We're lazy for, for a time, I don't know. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you. Really uh, question. A question from Alejandro Tawil. Uh, do you think like someone like Clint Eastwood, who himself plays jazz trumpet, has that quote unquote edge that you're talking about as shown in his films about musicians, straight, no chaser and bird? I couldn't understand you. I couldn't hear you the question as well. And I can't read it. So do you think that someone like Clint Eastwood, who himself is a jazz musician, uh, uh, has that edge that you're talking about. And he's done a lot of films on musicians like Straight No Chaser and Bird. Well, I think I think Clint Eastwood is, 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 is absolutely incredible. I think he has the edge to capture the director. Uh, he's an incredible director for me, very good director, as well as a great actor. And I think he had captured that edge. Um, one of the reasons is that Alejandro mentions is because he, he plays some, an instrument. The fact that he's also, besides being a great director and a multi-talented artist, one of his talents is music. Yes, I agree, I agree. I agree with him. Health, of course. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you, Adriana, for joining us. And thank you, thank you for Howard, with me. for hosting this. And uh, thank, thank you, you, the Howard. audience. Please join us uh, July 23rd for a session with uh, Lauren Deutsch. Have a good last of you your all. weekend.
Bye. <clears throat>